Welcome everyone officially to uh, today's webinar dealing with the dominating topic of 2020 COVID-19 and how it will affect reporting for companies. The four of us are looking forward to presenting our findings today. Professor Henning Zürich, who is the Chairholder of Accounting and Auditing at the HHL Leipzig Graduate School of Management, a university level institution that ranks amongst the leading international business schools. Mr. Philipp Ottenstein, a research associate and PhD candidate at HHL Leipzig, and Frederick and myself, who are project managers here at Nexar, an Austrian reporting agency that has specialized in digital reporting. As you most likely already have noticed, uh, the pandemic is the dominating reporting topic for 2020. And we named today's webinar 50 Shades of COVID because of the scope of areas within annual reports uh, the pandemic is affecting. The financials, of course, then employees, investments, outlook, market, risks, just to name a few. Uh, if you think about it, there probably are even more than 50 shades in total. And uh, prior to the webinar, we conducted a study on the half year reports of German DAX companies and COVID's omnipresence was already clearly visible. On the slide, you can see the average number of times uh, certain words that relate to COVID-19 are mentioned. So, for example, a pandemic 34 times on average, COVID 31.1 times or Corona 17 times. And if you consider the length of a uh, half year report, uh, this means that a mention was on uh, twice on every page, pretty much. And then um, if you were hoping to cover all 50 shades of COVID today, I'm terribly sorry to disappoint. A uh, 24 hour presentation just didn't seem feasible. So um, we decided to focus on the following four topics and um, we promise that the information gained will help you tackle the remaining 46. Frederick will begin today by uh, discussing how to position COVID in your CEO letter uh, or video and the possibilities you have to introduce uh, COVID in general in your next report. I will then continue uh, with what should be considered when it comes to imagery and photos and will then hand over to Henning and Philip, who will focus on recommendations regarding communication of financial and non-financial consequences of the pandemic within corporate reports. Many of these will be drawn from, German, uh, from the German competition investors darling, including DAX firms. Uh, we will conclude the presentation with a Q&A session. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat at any time. And Melanie, who is our producer today, will prepare them for the Q&A session at the end. And now, Frederick, over to you. Thanks, Lisa. So as you already mentioned, I will start now with the CEO introduction. And to make it all just a little bit more useful, we included many best practice examples throughout our presentation. So let's start. As you are probably all well aware, during the pandemic, transparent, authentic and empathic CEO communication is key. This has, of course, also a big impact on how you address COVID in your CEO letter. In this regard, COVID can actually become a chance to really focus on these three key elements of CEO communication. Let's have a look at BlackRock now, and Larry Fink used a very personal uh, approach to do so. When I or originally sat down to write this letter, I was in my office thinking about how to describe the events of 2019 and what BlackRock achieved last year. Today, that seems a distant reality. BlackRock's offices globally are nearly empty and instead I write to you in isolation from home like millions of other people. As dramatic as this has been, I do believe that the economy will recover steadily. By using the first person perspective instead of the commonly used we, Fink makes it almost sound like a private letter, so the introduction is a very personal one. Together with the clear focus on effects and consequences and the optimistic outlook and solutions he delivers, he makes it really like uh, empathic and transparent as it should be. And all of this, although Larry Fink is not the approachable or media present type of guy, as you very well know. Another creative way to start your CEO letter can be found at PWC. Choosing the word of the year was easy, COVID-19, and then a little later, as an organization, we learned that you can only move forward by working together. So in the second part, the focus really shifts towards the company's team spirit shining through during the pandemic, giving the letter a much more optimistic feeling again, which is exactly what you want to achieve in the severe times. 
at WPP, the CEO letter written by Mark Reed is a good example for another important point we wanted to show you that the people behind your company are most important. At WPP, our first priority is the well being of our people. Our second is continuity of service for our clients. So you can really see his people first approach here. But of course, that doesn't mean you cannot also focus on business, which naturally is the most important part of every annual report. So WPP is a really good example of how to combine of how to combine both. Last but not least, we have PNG with CEO David S. Taylor. He combines the elements we showed. Plus, he also includes some specific measures. So this CEO letter is a very good example of include all elements and to make your CEO introduction transparent, authentic and empathic. I want to briefly outline the immediate priorities we established to carry us through the pandemic. One, protect the health and well-being of PNG people. Two, maximize the availability of our products and three, support the communities. So these are the most important things to consider regarding your CEO letters. Let's have a quick look at CEO videos now. Obviously, COVID does also influence certain elements of your CEO videos. And as you know, CEO videos are one of the most important parts of every annual report. The content adaptions we just discussed also should be considered regarding your CEO videos. But what is even more important are some general thoughts about its concept. We believe that NewTracker is a great example of how to adapt your general making of, of the video to the current situation. So instead of just talking about it, I will now show you the very first part of the CEO video of NewTracker. So what's interesting here are mainly two things. One, we see a dialogue, not a monologue. And two, we have the look and feel of a webinar meeting. And as you see right now, the first message of the video is the following. COVID influences all of us in the same way, and even our CEO is working from home practicing social distancing. And the very personal start of the video you see here really underlines this message. Later on, as you see right now, the conversation mode of the video is mixed with footage material and even a little later with graphics taken from inside of the report. So what is important here is to really include COVID in your video. With the elements from this example, you really can show the impact of COVID on your company's financial year. That doesn't mean you have to talk about it all the time, but these elements should, some, should be some you should consider. Apart from the CEO letter and video, there are of course many other parts of your, C, uh, of your annual reports in which you sh could and sometimes should address COVID. So let's start with the second part of today's agenda, the COVID introduction. We will now give a quick overview on different ways to include the pandemic in your annual report because COVID will appear in either way and people surely will search for it. So why don't you just make it prominent? I will now give you a few examples of how to do that. At WPP, you see here Mark Reed, who we already know by now from the CO letter, and he wrote an extra COVID update, which you see here highlighted in blue. And as you also can see, this COVID updated is located at the very first part of the content, even in front of the CEO letter. So by this positioning alone, Mark Reed underlines the importance and urgency of the pandemic for WPP. But of course, there are also more subtle ways to include COVID in your annual report. One commonly used approach, which we think is a very good one, is to give qualitative information about how the pandemic influenced your financial year. PNG used this example in their online annual report, and I will just show you right now how they did that. They included, as you see right here, a new sub page in their online annual report 2020 called Stepping Up During the Pandemic. And in this sub page, they give lots of qualitative information about they handled the pandemic, how they took over social responsibility, and how they protected the workforce, served the consumers, and so on. So that's a very nice way to do it. Vodafone used a quite similar approach. As you can see here, they also included a new subchapter. And here they give, for example, information about how they gave 20,000 devices to the South African Ministry of Health in order to help. Another example is the Australian Commonwealth Bank. They included 
those highlighted COVID infoboxes you see right here. In there, they give again mostly qualitative information about how they sort of supported their customers and clients. And we believe this is a very good way to address COVID, so this should be found more often in next year's annual reports. At BT, British Telecommunications, uh, we have small pictograms newly introduced, which you can see here, showing a small virus cell. And wherever you see those small pictograms, COVID-related parts are can be found in the annual report. So this is, again, a very neat way to include qualitative information. And what might also be interesting for some of you is to not only give qualitative, but also, or maybe even instead, quantitative information about COVID influenced your company's financial year. At BHP, the Broken Hill proprietary company, we see this table. Here, they decided to give specific numbers about the COVID cases within the workforce, which you can see here in the upper part of the table, or how they supported and with how much money they supported social measures to help fight the pandemic. So this is a very nice way to give quantitative information. Henning and Philip will dive deeper into that matters in a few minutes on their part. But before that, I'm now giving back to Lisa, who will tell you all about you, uh, the imagery of your annual report. So Lisa, back to you. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, so for this shade, we will look at what needs to be considered when deciding on photos under the so-called new normal. I would like to start by showing images from last year's reports. Uh, these are all well thought out images that have been used to highlight different aspects of the companies and to give depth to the reports. Uh, you will see some photos, uh, typical photos before social distancing and masks became the new norm. So try to picture what changes would need to be made for this year's report. So first we have uh, a group photos. Here the board of director with other team members in the company setting, or also uh, professional photo shoots of the board of director, but everybody standing close together. Uh, then we have group photos taken during company events or also creative group photos uh, used to introduce the team. Um, what I actually like about this photo is that it could be used again this year to visually highlight the differences between 2019 and two, uh, 2020 and the impact of COVID. And take the group, move them to the tarmac, have everybody stand further apart and wear masks, and you have a uh, visual um, for the impact of COVID. And then coming to 2020, uh, this example shows uh, it is also important to keep COVID in mind when this, uh, designing your key visuals. While a concert or a big public event may um, reflect uh, your business and your key message, it may not be the best representation at the moment. So um, from our perspective, uh, this cover for the 2020 annual report of British telecommunications really missed the mark. Um, they missed the chance here to show how telecommunication has helped people stay connected during lockdown and to uh, adapt it to the current situation. So to summarize, consider the new normal in your photography and also show COVID's relevance for your company. And I will show some examples now of how this could be done, for example. So instead of uh, taking a group photo, group individual photos together. Uh, SAS has done this year and they've also shown COVID's impact in the individual photos by having um, the photographed people wear masks, for example or also use home office as a setting and show how you've stayed connected. This is a great opportunity to uh, relate to your shareholders. Everybody has been in this situation. And um, also the motto used here, we can together, is a very good one to use for an annual report cover in 2020. Then you can show individual members of the team on the job and also display which measures were taken to improve their safety. If you do want to take uh, group photos, um, show fewer team members, have them stand further apart and uh, wear masks or other security equipment. And then there's also the option that I've, the IFC has used here for the board of directors, take selfies uh, during a virtual call and combine them all together. This is also a great way to show that we're all in this together and to relate to the reader of the report. So um, there are actually many possibilities to show COVID's impact how you handled it, to relate to your stakeholders and also to be creative and come up with new concepts for your visuals. Um, and now let's get into the nitty gritty of the reporting. 
I'm delighted to hand over to Henning and Philip, who will go into more detail on co how COVID affects your business model, financial and non-financial reporting and outlook. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa and uh, Frederick, for your introduction and um, um, the um, very fruitful insights for, I guess, for every one of us. So now we come to our hardcore reporting, and uh, what you can see here is um, um, uh, it's a long uh, topic: management, financials, non-financial prospectus. And these are, from our point of view, and our uh, seven now seven years experience of. Uh, uh, investors Darling, we heard about this and I will tell you more uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that more about this uh, later on. These are the most important uh, pillars of uh, information that are, have to be transferred from our experience uh, to the capital market, especially the investors management. And we go through this um, steps uh, step by step management, financial, non-financial and prospectus. Management is talking about the business model um, and also uh, value management and also the capital market and dividend policy and things like that. Financials means, uh, yeah, it's, it's the analysis of balance sheet items and income statement items. Very important topics today. Um, everything is uh, important. Non-financials is CSR or today it's called ESG and corporate governance uh, elements. And last but not least, and this is also a very prominent thing uh, for us in our um, competition is prospectus talking about strategy. It's sometimes really um, um, yeah, um, interesting thing to see uh, how companies uh, present their strategy or its strat uh, their tr strategy. And today, in times of COVID, yeah, strategy rules. Um, yeah, and chances and risks and um, all the other things, um, outlooks that are the outlook that is important. So uh, let's start with um, the business model as part of uh, our management perspective. And I start with Burberry. Again, you know. Um, it's a cluster like this. On the left hand side, you see the um, example Burberry. On the right hand side, uh, your takeaway. And I and Philip, uh, we, we, we both, Philip and I, we, we try to put it in a nutshell for you. Uh, the interesting thing for Burberry or on Burberry uh, for Burberry is that they first of all uh, say, OK, we stay with our strategy. Um, this is unchanged and this is very, a very important information. And the next thing is that they talk about the adjustments. Um, that are made or have to be made based on the pandemic. Definitely there have to be um, adjustment, but not every company will stay uh, at its strategy. That has to be um, mentioned. And you see on the right hand side, the impact on corporate strategy and the strategic goal, goals have to be in an understandable way, have to be mentioned. OK, I hand over to, to, to Philip and you go ahead with, with Hornbach and maybe you you know Hornbach. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here we have Hornbach, the German do-it-yourself retailer. So uh, naturally, a business model that really thrives in the in the pandemic environment. Um, and they address this advantage of the how the business model also fits with the new reality in their opportunity report of the annual report. So here we have an, a report that includes already six months of of COVID in the past, but also when you talk about the future. They say that they estimate, uh, they expect for the positive effects on the net assets, results and so on. And therefore they also classify the pandemic in, in general as an opportunity in their, in their annual report. So um, on, the, and on the next slide, um, it's not only about the business model, as Henning has said before, uh, when we talk about management, also the capital markets, the shareholders, the view on the share performance is important with that. I hand back to you. OK, thank you very much. So again, we are in the in the management dimension. Remember the four dimension management, financial, non financial and prospectus. And here we talk about uh, the capital market reaction and uh, we've taken Borussia Dortmund. Um, maybe you know this or you have to know that this is the mo one of the most successful uh, German football uh, clubs beside the one in, in the south of Germany. I don't want to mention that. Uh, OK, but what is the important thing here? Um, in March, um, the uh, German Bundesliga stopped, and Borussia Dortmund is um, the one and only capital uh, or listed um, um, listed um, uh, uh, football club in Germany, and they uh, extremely um, detailed explained and illustrated uh, what has happened because this is uh, so critical about this business. And what we've seen is there a, a tremendous or a, a real um, high drop in the share price. And then on, on, I guess, three pages, Philip, uh, on three pages, they explained a lot. They illustrated, they described it, and they explained 
uh, the capital market reaction because from I guess from nine or eight euros per share to four euros per share, that's a, a critical thing. And then on a lower, it 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 um it it stays a state on a on a lower level that has to be explained because of the spec the specifications of the business and they have done this together with the whole situation of the German Bundesliga. Um, a, 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 a great um, example and for you as takeaway, illustrate, describe and explain um, the market uh, development. That's our recommendation and I, I again hand over to Philip. Okay, to add to this example, the same same topic, so share price description and analysis. We have also chosen a further example, uh, the rubber and automotive firm Continental. Uh, what's in our view noteworthy about this example is that um, here, in, in addition to what has been said on BVB, that here also the, the own share price of Conti is uh, related to the market development, not only on the product markets, as you can see here, negative effects on demand and production, starting with China, but also um, the share trend in the sector. So uh, in the chart, I hope you can see it, but I, I will just uh, quickly say it. Uh, here the share price is compared to the performance of an uh, industry benchmark, uh, the stock 600 uh, Europe automobiles and parts so uh, this is this is interesting because uh, Continental is not um, left alone with the effects of the pandemic here, and it's not only in the chart; it's also in the verbal uh, analysis and the description. So further aspect of capital markets uh, here, we've chosen this example: uh, Deutsche Beteiligungs AG, the German uh, listed private equity firm, where uh, they talk about their analyst perception and uh, they talk about. Um, First of all, the analyst coverage in, in general, who publishes the analysis, but also that um, the analysts have uh, only a few analysts have expressed their view on the uh, COVID impact uh, on the shares and the company. So uh, we think positive about this example is um, to describe the an analyst coverage, but also to state that the analysts overall at uh, at this date of publishing the report are not too concerned about the pandemic. So that's that's also an interesting uh, point to know. And further, also what's uh, what's a recommendation of ours is that um, also talk about ratings. Uh, how have ratings maybe changed uh, in reaction to, to the pandemic? So what's the rating agency's view on your shares? And then to uh, final um, example on the capital markets point of view, we chose uh, Adidas. Um, and especially the financial policy of Adidas. Here we have the uh, first half year report of, of this year. Um, and here we talk about the financial flexibility steps that uh, Adidas has taken. And Adidas relates these, uh, these steps with the dividend policy, um, especially related to the, to the current uh, year, where they describe that they have a, a syndicated loan of their core banks and the German, uh, the German public uh, development bank, KFW, and uh, as long as this is in place, they state at another part in the report, uh, no dividends and share buybacks are allowed. So this huge share buyback program they have started has been uh, has been stopped for the moment. And this is um, as explained also again in the notes, if you look at, at, at the notes to the statements. So this is informative for uh, current dividend policy, but also for future dividend policy. Um, and maybe with that, I hand over to to the financials part back to Helen. Yeah, OK, we leave um, the first dimension uh, called management and, and talk about the financial impact. And as I said before, this has something to do how you explain uh, or try to explain your financials, meaning um, the balance sheet item, income statement items and cash flow statement items, for example, and the uh, the changes and the deviations from year to year based on your business model. Uh, you hopefully have explained in easy words beforehand in the management part um, in your uh, annual statement. So first of all, I just want to. Oh, sorry. I just want to go for um, our example, Commonwealth Bank, the Austra uh, Commonwealth Bank, the Australian Credit Institution. What you can see here, and this is my my focal point, is COVID nineteen is embedded in the um, analysis of the financial KPIs. It started with a headline. And it's 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 an incremental part of every uh, uh, KPI that that is discussed and will further on discussed, and it's not um, and it's not an abstract information, so to speak. It's uh, the direct impact of COVID nineteen is mentioned every time uh, um, in at every 
Uh, they tried it for every KPI um, and sometimes, uh, not sometimes, but it's it's really helpful for the investors, uh, especially when you're working in, an especial, in a special business like um, uh, the banking sector, for example. And I go ahead with the second one. This is Novartis, a pharmaceutical company. Uh, and here we see the growth discussion. Um, the growth dis discussion means when, if you look at the, the first column, for example, um, then you have the, the quarter one, 2020, and you see the constant currency and their growth rate. And then in, um, in relationship to um, the impact of COVID-19 and uh, the impact without uh, um, the impact without COVID-19 and then um, the COVID-19 impact. So sorry for that. So that means, uh, OK, Novartis um, has a positive impact on growth uh, based on the COVID-19. And this is a, a, a quite fine um, definition um, how you can explain, for example, your growth situation if this is part of your strategy. And important thing, the second bullet point here on this slide is break it down to your segments. Uh, and this is a segmental reporting is also in our investors darling, for example, this is a, a very important information for the investors to um, to be informed about uh, strengths and weaknesses in your uh, different business segments. This is one example. And then we have Covestro. Um, maybe you know, know Covestro um, based on the chemical in industry. Um, it's not really a new kid on the block, but it's, it's uh, not, not a real traditional company, so to speak. But um, what they have uh, mentioned here is um, they have suffered from uh, COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic because of the volumes that went down and they explained it um, in detail. And um, you can see that this is an explanation of the effects of the pandemic, uh, just in short, but um, on um, a buff um, um, on, the, on the top of this slide. And the second thing is that's um, a more important thing. They try to um, identify and measure these effects uh, uh, on sales and earnings. So in our question, what we uh, raised with a lot of uh, discussion with a uh, practitioner, for example, um, how will you go uh, go on with your earnings push, um, your earnings before measures? And some of uh, some of the people in, in theory said, OK, uh, it's time for EBIT duck earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization and Corona. That means um, in the end uh, only show the, the sales numbers, for example, it's before everything. But what we just want to tell you with this slide is besides what Covestro has done with the explanation on sales and earnings is think about your earnings before figures and um, uh, the earnings before figures are not standardized, uh, sometimes are part of the earnings management uh, strategy of a company. Explain it, uh, give a definition how you deal with the pandemic with respect to earnings before figures. Um, the next thing is Merck and Merck has illustrated um, um, the assets and also the liabilities parts. Here we have only um, focus on the assets part. Important is um, that the change is um, for the asset part is especially uh, focused, and this is in the um, qualitative information in this section uh, also mentioned, is that there is an increase in the cash position 0.8 uh, to 1.5, and this has doubled in order to secure the liquidity by the end of the first quarter. So they show us that they are prepared, and this is first of all an illustration. Um, it makes it easy to follow, and secondly, they focus on what is really important for them? Cash and cash equivalents to be prepared for what is um, um, what is uh, what is coming next. So in the next two examples, I will uh, make it short. Uh, uh, again, a long story uh, sh short are uh, two uh, examples dealing with impairment of assets. Every one of you has to think about at the end of the year how to deal with impairments and how to explain impairments. The German uh, Financial Reporting Enforcement Panel, if you look at the hot topics of the enforcement panel, every time, every year, since 13 years in place, or more than uh, 13 years, I guess just 15 years, uh, goodwill impairment or intangible impairment is a hot topic. So a recommendation is to explain it in detail because today uh, there are triggering events. So what has Infineon done? Uh, Infineon has explained it, um, the changes uh, due to the pandemic, uh, have talked in detail, it's just a, um, a snapshot um, of what they have talked about, 
Uh, what are the triggering events? What are the assumptions behind it? What are the critical items like value in use, fair value, less cost to sell, uh, the cash generating unit? Explain it again and again, and it's not a repetition of the standard text. It's just in, um, in, in set in the context of COVID-19, especially Goodwill is mentioned here, and Thyssen Krupp, for example, they elaborated a lot on what has changed, uh, what is the uh, definition, uh, what are the triggering events, but also talking about scenarios. And some two scenarios when they um, face a severe triggering event is uh, probably, and this is the interim report of the first half, um, if uh, the, uh, there's an increase of the after-tax discount rate by 1%, and uh, there is an uh, increase or a change, a decrease, a decrease, sorry, uh, in the sustainable perpetuity growth rate by 0.5 percentage points. So they say, okay, there are thresholds, and we have to keep pace with those thresholds. And if the, we we um, 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 exceed or there's a decrease, increase, then we have a triggering event. The guide and the investors through um, this forthcoming triggering event here in this half yearly um, um, interim report for the first half. And I hand over to Philip for the next dimension. Okay, so the third dimension, the non-financials, uh, namely ESG. Uh, what's, I think, remarkable in the pandemic situation is that uh, at least that it, it appears that the social dimension also has uh, increased in relevance. So the ESG uh, maybe uh, come, uh, maybe are coming more to balance. Um, so here we see one example of, of Deutsche Telekom, what they have done to, to also not only protect their, their, their company at large, but also a specific shareholder group. So on the bottom, you can see that to protect the customers and employees, uh, especially um, they closed down their shops temporarily and sent out over, uh, sent out over 16,000 uh, employees to, to working from home. So this is uh, at, at some part, uh, of course, driven by the overall situation, but also a voluntary key measure. So we have virtual uh, annual general meetings. We have working from home. We have the cancellation of uh, a major trade fair and all of these social aspects are discussed in, uh, in the uh, report. And here we talk about the Q1 report, so quite early reporting about those key measures. And the second example about uh, Bayersdorf, the German consumer business company, what, uh, what, why have we chosen this example? Because um, in addition to the telecom example here, they also show um, what they do to address the pandemic um, re with regards to the society at large, to help the society fighting the pandemic. And just to maybe to name one of the many examples in their report of Q1, in their quarterly statement Q1. So for example, here they talk about the donation of 1 million liters of disinfectant, or also they uh, donated 5 million tins of Nivea cream, so a core product of them. And we think what's good about this example, it's easy to understand and it's very much uh, very closely related to Bayersdorf's core business. Um, yeah, then for the fourth dimension, the pro prospectives, we talk about the outlook and we know there is great uncertainty, but nevertheless, we do find examples for companies who provide an outlook and we have chosen two from the DAX, uh, SAP and Infineon. Maybe to uh, describe what um, SAP does here, uh, we have an updated business outlook. This is the, the title. So in the Q3 report, they update their outlook from the Q1 and they first talk about what was the key assumption for the Q1. Uh, for example, th this outlook assumed economies would re reopen and population lockdowns would ease. And then they describe um, their new outlook, their updated one. Uh, with another trigger to change the outlook. So lockdowns have been really recently reintroduced and that's a key difference to the initial outlook. What, um, what they show here is an outlook for the current fiscal year. That's the last quarter of, of 2020. And now um, Infineon, I think uh, we think that's a, also a good example to, to give an outlook, but nevertheless, as you can see on the bottom left, um, that the outlook is still um, is still subject to severe uncertainty. So uh, this is stated um, in a very straightforward way, but they also provide an outlook for the full year. So here we have um, the, the two the two quarters that uh, that come uh, are addressed here, the full year, the next quarter. The outlook is quantified, uh, not only sales, earnings, um, but also depreciation, capex, 
and the free cash flow. But also, for example, in the free cash flow figure, we can see that there is severe uncertainty because it has a more broader range than other other numbers here. And um, yeah, for the closing remarks, I hand back to Henning. Yeah, OK, thank you very much, Philip. Tons of information and um, you of course can get um, more information and everything uh, that is our experience goes back to the reference book, uh, the NU report. And um, this is um, to make uh, to make you familiar again. I guess a lot of uh, people of you are are um, aware of this. This is our uh, comp yearly competition of investors darling. And this year um, uh, we extended this competition in a way that we introduced embedded a, a kind of Corona score. So first of all, you see above the 90 percent, this is the RIC score. RIC is reporting investor relations and capital markets. We focus on the annual report, reporting, hardcore reporting, investor relation, the back end, voluntary information back into the capital market and the reaction on the capital market for the seventh year, next year for the eighth year and the German market with a lot of experience in financial communication for the most important, most relevant companies in Germany listed in the DAX 30, MDAX and SDAX. And then we said this year, uh, it doesn't make sense to go for um, business as usual and we introduced the Corona score and raised questions like we raised here. I tried to explain in management, financials, non-financials and um, also um, uh, prospectives where we try to uh, say, OK, the investors just want to know more about this. So and uh, if you want to know more about this, then um, turn to us and we have, a, um, let's say, a very um, um, extended um, um, fact book where all the best practices are are in, especially uh, dealing with Corona issues. But the last thing I can tell you is that we we um, we um, analyze the qu the first quarter um, um, uh, quarterly report or message of the companies um, in our competition, and we have seen that the financial analysts have a lot of trust in the market, but the expectations grow and grow and grow. And you have to fulfill those expectations for the year 2020, dealing with management, financials, non-financial and prospectus. So, and that's all. I just want to say, the only thing I, I want to close with is don't blame everything on COVID-19. What does that mean? So it's, it's tempting to blame everything on COVID-19. But again, I come back to our experience, and that's also the experience of, of Nexa with the digitization, is um, the capital mar market is uh, has learned a lot in the last decade. Um, and uh, my message to you, the investors are not stupid, and they know uh, really a lot about earnings management. They know a lot about big bath accounting. And now remember, impairment of assets and those things, explain it in detail and understandable. So that's all. I just want to, or we just want to um, tell you, and I hand over to uh, Melanie for the final discussion. Thanks a lot for the presentation and all the insights you shared. Um, we already have a couple of questions. I'm going to read them out. Um, first one to all of you is, will you share the presentation slides later on? Yeah. No problem, definitely. And we also recorded the presentation, so you will find it at uh, our social media accounts at LinkedIn. Later on, uh, I think in this week we will publish the video, so that won't be a problem. Great, so the basic one is done. The next question is financially, our company is not really affected by COVID, so we don't plan to address the pandemic in our CEO letter. What do you recommend? I think that's to Philip and Henning. OK, CEO letter. So um, we, we raised this question during our uh, analysis in the summertime and we said uh, everyone is affected by COVID. And if your business is um, is uh, maybe positively influenced by COVID, uh, that's what you um, are just just talking about and uh, name it, name it, because otherwise uh, the people, the investors believe that you ignore COVID. There are two sides of the coin, positive and negative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And maybe, maybe to to add to what Henning has said, um, it, it's helpful for um, for the readers of the report to um, not leave the pandemic as an abstract construct and say, well, the pandemic does not affect our our company, but does it affect your your revenue streams? Does it affect your um, your product markets on the sourcing side? Does it affect your your employees maybe because they are living in in cities uh, that have lockdowns? 
etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So maybe that um, that to add. So back to Melanie. Thank you for the answer. Um, next question is: What is your personal opinion on the EBITDA? Which companies would you recommend to report this figure? Okay, I guess that's also also a question to to us. So um, at the um, at the time, um, um, yeah, as the, the lockdown started uh, on on LinkedIn, there was a post dealing with Evidac. I, I I can remember, and this was just a joke. They said uh, one of the um, the guys from I guess from an Australian university said the next thing is to talk about Evidac. So I don't I don't recommend to you to push. Uh, 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 earnings pro, um, um, earnings um, um, uh, performer earnings figure like EBITDA. I just want to um, um, recommend to you, or maybe uh, Philip, you can step in just in a second. So um, um, stay at your performer earnings, but try to explain the um, the definition or define it, and um, reshape it uh, under the COVID nineteen pandemic. You are free. Uh, to um, invent, a, a, let's say, a new kind of uh, performer earning, but then be transparent and explain it because it has to be part of your business and explain explain best your business and the changes in your business. Or yep. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the next one goes to the Nexa team and our colleague Eloy also joined in the meantime. So maybe one of you could answer the next one. Um, where should I put the info boxes and icons you showed us before? Which ones are your favorites? Uh, I think that's for my part, so I will take over here. Um, so first of all, we obviously like all of them, so that's why we showed them to you. Um, it in the end totally depends on what you want to focus on. Um, what we think might be a good middle way is to first of all address it in a new subchapter or subpage, like we showed you at Vodafone or PNG in their online annual report, to give their uh, only on one page specific information about you that with it. And um, another very good way is if you want not, don't want to set the focus that concretely on COVID, you could use those info boxes. Um, for example, the Australian Commonwealth Bank uh, info boxes we showed uh, were located in the top corners of the pages where they gave the specific information about um, what they wanted to describe with the info boxes. So that's another good way to include it. And yeah, in the end, obviously, it depends on uh, what you want to set the focus on. But um, those are the best examples we found uh, during our research. Thank you, Frederick. Um, one general question, what is the best way to name the coronavirus in the report? So far, there are different options. For example, COVID-19 in title case, COVID-19 in uppercase, corona, coronavirus, etc. So what's what's the recommendation to to write it? So from a, from a content <laughs> specific point of view, um, you can uh, you can choose everything you want, but be coherent in everything you do. And uh, what we experience, and I guess that's also uh, true for for the Nexa team. Maybe you can comment on that. Um, um, companies use uh, different terms. Use a unique one, and then it's on you. Yeah. Well, what's uh, your opinion, Nexa team? Maybe we can come back to our study, uh, the small yeah. study uh, we discussed. So the ones which are most commonly used right now are pandemic and COVID-19. Uh, these are the, yeah, the names we found uh, most often so far. But yeah, that's that's only what the companies did until now. So. I guess COVID-19 is also um, a very good option considering that it's the specific term for the virus and coronavirus is a bit more general. So if there's another coronavirus in the future that um, affects the business, uh, it's then easier to distinguish. So that might be a pro for COVID-19. But best is to choose one and then stick with it and be coherent. Great, thank you. The next one is directly to you, Henning. Um, Professor Zürich, due to the COVID, everything is uncertain for our company. At the moment, we don't want to include an outlook in this year's report. What do you think about that? 
Okay, that's my personal <laughs> opinion. That no, uh, uh, nothing. Um, so just avoid it, uh, not avoiding the outlook. But um, what is the impression in the market? You are not able, cape able to survive in a. Uh, we call it, you know, that a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambitious world. So when we talk about, and this is also what we uh, teach here in HHL, there is scenario management and your management has to be able to navigate uh, through this kind of pandemic. And this is not only the outlook we talk about. If you're not able to give an outlook, that means a qualitative one or a, a range of possible values, then you are not able to um, reinvent yourself in a way that you um, uh, adapt your strategy, uh, strategy to a uh, post a pandemic uh, situation. So no outlook is no option because in the capital market, the experience and the let's say perception is that you are not able um, to navigate through the pandemic or COVID-19 or the, the word I knew the wording COVID-19 now. OK, I hope that that's OK for you. Oh, Philip, do you want to add something? No. OK. Thanks for that. Um... One thing, we have two questions left um, at the moment. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them, then we can yeah, answer them. If not, we, we have two final ones. Um, OK, I see one is no question, it's a comment. Um, it says, no questions, but a comment to state the obvious. It is imperative to keep consistency across the different parts of reports and communication. For example, if management's updated expectations for revenue growth are negative, the parameters for goodwill impairment testing need to also reflect this. So that goes to the last question about the consistency. Okay, that's great, yeah. So, and, and we have a question now, and, um, for the HHL team. Should we yes. go for that? Yes, that's that's the final one. If if, if nobody has a, a further question, it goes to the HHL team, as you mentioned. What do you recommend to companies whose business model has been radically changed by COVID? For example, flight or travel companies. What should they report regarding their business model and strategy? Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky question. I, I guess um, not a tricky question. Be honest. Uh, be honest and, and talk about what is going on. And uh, if you can't reshape your strategy, uh, if you have to build up a new strategy, talk about this and ask for time. Ask the investors for time. Uh, if you do not talk about, it's like Outlook, if you do not talk about what is going on in your uh, company, uh, the investors um, are um, left alone. Uh, and uh, this, um, the the let's say the impact on not only the share price but on your reliability in the market will be um, more severe uh, in 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 the way uh, or in the years uh, than there is maybe uh, a breakdown in your business model or whatever. Um, so talk about this uh, and in an understandable way. So what I what we experienced seven years of um, of investor starting is um, uh, companies in trouble. Um, are not able to talk about honestly about their business model in easy words to explain where are the um, uh, critical success factors. And this is also there's also a red line uh, to the strategy. And no, normally they only uh, talk about uh, their strategy on a more superficial level. There's a headline, but nothing more, nothing left. Talk about it in a way, as I said before, be honest and talk about uh, not mistakes, but um, you need time in order to overcome the pandemic and the management team is working on that by this, that and that and the outcome will be this or that. Maybe um, your experience, Philip, um, uh, with our investors, darling, and strategy rules, yeah. Strategy rules, yes, uh, it's, it's prospective information. It's not necessarily in the outlook, uh, but maybe to this also has a reference to the question before that we have on the outlook. Um, I mean, if you are not able to 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 formulate what um, what you, what you what you have changed and what you expect the the market, your revenues and so on to to be in the future then at least write as much as you know. So uh, there might be things that you don't know, but there, there, there are a lot of things that you know about, for example, the market development, the industry development. Uh, we talk about the macroeconomic development. And if you're not able to exactly quantify 
your, your sales numbers may be based on the new strategy because you have no experience with the new strategy, uh, the new business model, then at least uh, elaborate as far as you can in, uh, in, in, those, uh, in those report sections. Yeah, and what, what you have to realize, it's not only strategy, so everything is touched. So that's what we try to say. It starts with the management perspective. It starts with your business model, value um, uh, value management. And then uh, if you have problems with your strategy, it has it is reflected in your financials, in your non also non-financials, and um, you can't hide it in a way. So um, what is the recommendation? So the, the people in charge uh, just want to know um, just a recommendation from us. Be honest, that's it. And to explain it, yeah. that's it. Thank you. So we have no further questions. So the final call for last questions is now. But I think, yeah, th there will be no more, as I see in my list. So maybe you have some, some final words to end the webinar. So. Yeah, um, our, um, um, let's say, uh, final words are um, the annual report of 2020, either hard copy or digital, uh, the digital um, version uh, will be a challenge. And as we have seen, uh, Outlook, uh, um, um, we talked about strategy. Every one of us is, is uh, confronted with this COVID-19 or pandemic thing. So, and uh, from our point of view, what we experience with the uh, also uh, from the investor side is uh, I can repeat it again and again and be honest. So it's a kind of um, uh, building trust by illustrating, describing and explaining. That's it. Yeah, that, that's it. Three words to come. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Nothing more to add from our side. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Okay, so I guess that's it. Thank you very much for your participation and for the very good questions. Um, as we said, we record the session and you will find it on LinkedIn. And we can also share the presentation slides with all of you so that you get all the information you need to have. Okay, that's it from our side. Have a good week and see you soon.